first off, I'd like to say thank you all for being here today. I know that you were required to do so, but I appreciate it anyway. Um, so today I'm actually going to discuss a little bit about the poverty in Mexico. So let's start with some general facts. So in Mexico, about 41.9% of the Mexican population is in poverty. And that's from an article in America's Quarterly. And from an article in Mexico News Daily, they say that 7.4% are actually in extreme poverty, which I will explain in a little bit. Now, most of you probably assume that poverty has to deal directly just with the amount of money someone has or the amount of income someone makes. And for the most part, it would be true because that's correct. But um, there are actually other poverty determiners. And these are things such as access to food, access to quality education, access to quality health care, access to housing and housing services, and of course, my favorite, money. So as you can see, they're actually all kind of connected. For example, if you do not make a lot of money, or if you don't have enough money, you can't afford to buy food, or you can't afford to buy utilities for your housing. And if you don't have a quality education to get jobs to provide money, then you will not make money. And these are all from the National Council for the Evaluation of Social Development Policy, which is a mouthful, so they call themselves CONIVAL. And CONIVAL is an organization that determines poverty levels and determines the qualifications for poverty, especially in Mexico. And they have established that if a family is missing one or more of these determiners, they're said to be in poverty. And if they're missing three or more, they're said to be in extreme poverty. Now today I'm actually going to narrow in on one specific determiner. That would be health services. Now let's talk a little bit about the health care in Mexico. In Mexico, there are different ways you can get health care, such as insurance from Social Security. Um, you can also get it from the IEEE. But you can only get that if you work for the government or work for your state <coughs> in Mexico. And lastly, you can get it from private providers, and but you have to pay out of pocket for those. So you can see, what about those who don't have money to pay out of pocket, who don't have social security, or don't work for the government? That is people who are in poverty. So what is available for them? What are the health care services available for them? Well, there's this thing called Subaru Popular, which is a government health care provided system. Um, and this started in the early 2000s, because before then, according to Julio Frank and his um, associates for the World Health Association, they say that before this, only about half of the Mexican population had insurance or health care access. So this was established to give access to the people who didn't have this before. So how it works, it's based off of your income. So if you make income, say, a little bit more than poverty, then a small percentage will go towards this program. And with nothing too drastic to change your lifestyle, but some of it will go. But what about those who can't, who make no money, who are in poverty? Well, they won't have to pay anything. And the nice thing about Super Popular is that actually you don't have to pay a copay, so extra fees for using these services. So, of course there has to be a catch, or I wouldn't be talking about it. And there is. Subaru Popular actually has a lot of problems associated with it. And these are things like lack of resources. They often do not have the med enough medicine that they need or enough tools and utilities that they need for their hospitals to properly treat their patients. There are also not enough people to provide the care. There are not enough people who are willing to work for Super Popular and who are practicing. And also, it's low quality. According to an article by Cynthia Brown and her associates discussing those who use this government program, they say that 60% had negative experiences with it, like slow services and insufficient assistance. And 40% even said that they were disrespectful and they were not fair and they were not treated kindly. So there was also a doctor for Mexico News Daily who was interviewed that actually um, worked both in a Subaru Popular Hospital and the IEEE program. And when he works in the Subaru Popular Hospital, he has noticed these differences. 
he notices the constant stress that people are under because of the lack of resources and the lack of people who are willing to help. But then he works with the IEEE and he has these resources and they have the people who are willing to help. Mexico also doesn't spend a whole lot on their healthcare. According to Healthline, the GDP, GDP expenditures that they spend for healthcare is about 3.3%, which is relatively low compared to other OECD countries, which are countries like in Europe, or countries like the United States and Canada. So why is this a problem? Why does this matter? Well, as you see, people in poverty are not receiving the quality services they need. And people in poverty often have a lot of health problems. I'm actually going to discuss two health problems specifically associated with women in poverty in Mexico because women are often very vulnerable, especially those in poverty. So in poverty for women in Mexico, they actually have a rise in cervical cancer and surprisingly obesity. According to a study by Lynette and Newfield and her associates studying obesity in Mexican women in poverty, they say that in, when they observed the four to eight time period that they observed these women, it showed that 38.5% um, to 73.2% increase, which was about 236 women to about 500 women. And according to a study by Nina Sofia Palicio Mejia and her associates studying cervical cancer mortality rates for women in poverty in Mexico, showed that actually cervical cancer mortality is associated with poverty factors or our poverty determiners, such as lack of education or, ding, 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 lack of quality access to healthcare. So why does all that matter? Like I said, people in poverty are not receiving quality healthcare. And you can see that they're very vulnerable to health problems, I mean, more so than probably those who can afford the healthcare. So although people who are paying for this quality healthcare or have the money to pay for it and receive it, it's not fair for those who can't physically afford it, even though they need it. So if Mexico or anyone or those who hope Mexico could help improve this program by maybe spending more money improving this program, they could help alleviate some of the poverty levels, that 41.9% poverty that they have there, or at least improve the standard of living for those who suffer in poverty in Mexico. So thank you. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer.